So welcome back to another episode of Your Raw. We're on episode three now. We've had an image sent in by a Mr. Ellis Woods. Now, I've been watching Ellis and his videos and his photography for quite a while now, a couple of years now. And I think his, he is excellent and he probably doesn't give himself enough justice he really is a good photographer. He gets some absolutely amazing images. So first thing I would say is get over to his YouTube channel. He's a YouTuber as well. Amazing, amazing little ridge this. And uh, seldom photographed. He vlogs his, his uh, experiences and um, he gets all over the country, he gets up into the mountains. He's a mountain man, really. He's, uh, he's Welsh, he's up in Snowdonia area. He knows all that area. But this image is sent in for me to, to have a look at. He's actually from Scotland, the northwest of Scotland, in the Ascent area, I believe. Yeah, get over his channel, have a look at that. When we I show you the image, also he's done a video with this that includes this image so please again pop over and have a look at the video i'll put everything in the description below okay alice just give me a little bit of a backstory of the day that you 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 took this image um what you actually did to get there etc hi steve thanks for choosing my image to edit probably do a better job than me uh yeah it was an amazing, uh, amazing day in a sense. In terms of travelling, it took probably from North Wales to a sin, it's about eight, nine hour drive on a good day. And then, so say a nine hour drive followed by a two hour hike. So it's pretty, pretty demanding with all the, uh, all the gear on your back as well, the camping gear. Uh, I went with Benjamin Barendrecht, he's a really good mountain photographer. So we're kind of like, running around the hill uh, like headless chickens because the light was insane. It really was amazing. What actually inspired you to go there? Inspiration was just, I've seen some amazing shots from Ascent and in general the Torridonian sandstone as well. Uh, and I really just wanted to capture the sandstone with the mountains as well, try and get an image where you incorporate in both because the, as well as like the individual mountains in that area, uh, Torridonian sandstone is also kind of like a hallmark of a synth, uh, I suppose. So just getting both in an image was uh, was uh, what I wanted to do. I've seen a few few vlogs. I think Cliff Hans did a vlog from that, from a different hill. I think he was on uh, Ben uh, Ben Fiddler, and he got some nice shots. So yeah, it's just uh, just that rich, seeing other people's work. But it was an amazing week, and we had some uh, really good light too. So besides that seven hour drive and then the hike and i know you camped overnight besides that what other t challenges did you have and did you face when you actually taken the image because it's an absolutely stunning image and i can't wait to get into the edit main difficulty capturing it i'd say was probably the weather you, i don't know if you've seen the vlog but the weather was really brief so like the winds are out 50 mile an hour gusts It's about minus five. Uh, so normally when you're taking images, you slow down, you focus stark, you can get everything like perfect. But when, when it's in that, the conditions are that extreme, sometimes it's just about getting a shot in the bag. Even if the horizon isn't straight, just get it in the bag and you can source it out when you get back. Just make sure you've got the, uh, got the data and it's sharp and then you can worry about everything else pretty much uh, when you get home. So I'd say the weather was the biggest difficulty. Uh, if I do, anything differently i suppose going back to the last point i would try and slow down even though the weather was brutal because i was just like scatter gunners everywhere i was all over that ridge just trying to because i had uh Solven was had nice light on it too which is on the other side of the mountain so i wanted to capture everything in one scene because obviously it's so far away i won't be back if i was if i lived there i'd focus on one point but i was like absolutely scatter gun 
if there was three words I'd use to describe my time, in a sense, it'd be storm, light, and pies. All three I had in abundance. Anyway, I hope you do a, do a nice job of editing it. Probably Again, like I said, better than mine, uh, probably, but uh, yeah, really was. Uh, it was one of my favourite sunsets I've, I've shot so far. So yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for featuring my shot, and I'll see you soon. So obviously, the first thing we'll do is we'll we'll open it up in the room, which I've already opened it up there. So um, we'll open it up in the room, and we'll have a look. First impressions are, it's a big, big wow. It's a fantastic composition. You almost can see the effort that is put into getting this image. You can see the drama in the sky. You can see the weather that's battered them as they've been up the, the mountain there. So I just want to try and convey that within the image, I suppose, and just bring out the best of it. And obviously it's at sunset and the sun's coming over that top of the, the mountain there at the end of the day. So they're camping there the night. It must have been brutal. And I'm not, I'm not going to oh, I'm so jealous because I would have loved something like that. Okay, <laughs> enough about the actual image, let's get editing it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is have a look at bringing a little bit of detail out. Um, and all I'm gonna do, we'll, we'll just up the contrast, slight, contrast slightly. First thing is just up it slightly. And we're gonna up the shadows and just have a look what detail we got. I don't wanna draw his eye into here, but I just want to have a little look at what we've actually got. So I'm just going to drop it back down again. And I think there's two ways we can do this bit. I'm finding this little rock in the corner just a little bit distracting. Now, I think what I'm going to do is rather than, I could just crop it. I could just crop to there. We'll, we'll just have a little look at that. You know what? I think I'm going to keep the crop. I think it just tidies that bottom bit up and it forces, because we've, we've cropped the image, we're working from that right corner up into the left a little bit more and I think, I think the actual crop works quite well. So we'll leave the crop at that. Um, highlights, we can drop the highlights down a bit. Just what I'm looking for with the highlights is if we zoom right into the actual highlights where the sun is coming through and what I'm looking for is to bring that detail out here in the, the islands behind and I would say something around there would do it. So let's just come back out again. Um, we obviously want to bring a bit of detail out in this sky um because all that drama's there it's all there um, what i'm going to do i'm going to up the exposure just to brighten the image a little bit but then i'm going to select a radial filter and we'll up the exposure on that And again, I'm going to concentrate on the sky area. Let me just come out a little bit more, make a real big filter like that. Invert, and then we can really bring that sky down without affecting too much of anything else. So let's go back in there now and make a nice big filter, and we can. Really, really bring that drama out in the sky. And then obviously the other thing we can do is, I'll tell you what, we could do it on that filter. What I'll do is I'll just up the DA slightly. Just a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, 
I'm going to bring little bits of detail out in this foreground rock. And like I say, that, fore, that rock is pointing over towards the light that's shafting through here. We'll bring, try and bring a little bit more detail out in this shafted light as it hits the rock and, and, that, and, and this nice dark cloud above. So, and I'm going to do that all pretty much with a, a local adjustment. And when I mean local adjustment, uh, is is a filter. So I'm going to pick a brush this time, and we're going to do a little bit of brush work. So I'm going to up the exposure just slightly, and up the wall just slightly, and I'm just going to just bring some. Just emphasise whether it's just slightly lighter on the top of this rock, just to give it even more definition. More contrast, that's what we're doing. It's a real dominant part of the image. And we'll just have a look at that before and after. It just brings it out and I might just, just up the temperature slightly. There we go. Um, and while we've on the temperature, I'm going to up the luminosity of the oranges. And the yellows. But I'm also going to up the saturation of both as well. So there we go. So we're just making that. Them nice warm colours work for us. Because the rest is quite... The tones around it are quite cold, uh, but we've just got this last warm light at the end of the day before you know it's going to go really cold. We've got a few highlights hitting this, this foreground rock just around here, which I'm going to try and bring out. So we'll grab that same brush that I used and we'll just do a little bit more painting around here. Nothing too much, just little bits. And then I'll grab another brush and then we'll just drop down the exposure and we'll just bring out the shadows a little bit more there. Or when I say bring out, just make them more contrasty by almost painting the shadows back in there. And if you have a look what I've done there, just be before and after. And then I'm going to grab another brush tool. Drop the exposure again. Nice big brush this time. We'll just zoom out. Real big brush, because we're just gonna. There we go. And then we're just gonna darken this bottom up a little bit. Back out again. Um, I think sometimes what you gotta do is actually study the image and, and, and have a look at what you actually feel you wanna to, wanna to do with the image. There's no certain process that you you it's just about studying the image. What do I want from the image? I wanna bring a little bit more detail out in this, this rock area here. So we will we will grab a, a um another mask, another brush, and we shall up the sharpness slightly, up the texture sort of. 50 and then we'll just I love the little bits of lichen on the on that rock there really do make the rock stand out we'll put a little bit of sharpness in there I'm going to put a little bit just around the mountain there then I'm going to grab another radial filter I'm going to try and bring out this golden light that's bursting through. And if we up the DAs, where are we? Uh, DAs, if we up the, or drop the DAs, it will just bring out that, that glow with a bit of colour. 
and if we just have a look at that again probably just force that into there a little bit more let's just have a look at that what I'm going to do is just subtract the luminosity so we've grabbed a dark part of the mountain there so it's going to subtract a lot of that um, and then we can go back to the mass then so it's just giving that nice soft glow probably a little bit too much actually let me just the deaze is just a bit too harsh on here there we go just a subtle subtle and i'm going to drop the amount down as well it really is a subtle edit we'll just have a look at um, the before and after and like I say all we've tried to do is, is bring out what's already there that's all we're trying to do I don't honestly feel as if there's a lot more to do I might just do a little bit of colour grading just to bring out them them oranges at the end of the day that warmth and the cold the cold shadows the cold water the reflections of the the moody sky but we've got this last bit of warmth coming through so I've up the the highlights if I show you if I just bump it right up but if we can just drop it to about that and then shadows if we can just blue them off a little bit that is definitely too much if we just just a little bit I don't think we need to send it into Photoshop I need to send it into Photoshop we've got not, I've got, not got to remove anything detailed anything like that I might just pull the, the darkness of this cloud at the top down again we might, and I'll try it with um might get away with a ray uh, with a linear grad. So we'll just drop it over like that. Nicely feathered. And then we'll just drop that exposure just a touch. And that will again it'll give that natural vignette that we got because we've got the nice dark shadow in the bottom of the rock there. Night dark, nice dark shadows here. Let's turn it off. The moody sky above with that little pocket of light coming through. I wanted to try and capture the Torridonian sandstones. So I captured this image and they point towards Stack Poly and the rain shower coming through. Oh, it's spectacular. One of the best sunsets I've ever shot. Doesn't matter where I've been, this was, this was amazing. What an amazing shot. What an amazing adventure he had. Now, like I say, if you haven't watched um, Ellis's channel, get over there, start watching his back catalogue as well. He gets some phenomenal shots from unbelievable locations. Like I say, a lot of it, North Wales. Um, he's very educated and a super, super, super photographer and very underrated. I think I think I get the feeling he may even and I hope he don't mind me saying this underrate himself I don't think he realizes how good he really is um, as a, a youtuber and photographer what more can I say really thank you very much Ellis um, for sending this over it's it's a real privilege to edit one of your images and um, I hope you have many more adventures in the future. Thanks for watching. This has been a nice, easy, quick edit for me. <laughs> um, it's been a lovely edit. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, why not like and subscribe. But until next time, I'll see you again.